Welcome to Part of My Imagination. I'm Imagination and you're the Imaginers. What? I don't have anything. Your food's out there. Welcome, this is your first time. My name is Jasmine and welcome back if it's your second or third or how many times you've been on my channel. Welcome. Today I'm going to be going over my September TBR. Um, I'm keeping with the theme of last month and I have 16 books here. Um, I'm hoping to read a little bit more, but beggars can't be teachers. We're just getting into it. Um, if you hear my cat meowing, she has some grievances. I don't really know because she has food in her bowl, water. I've given her some pets. I don't really know. Ah, she's attacking me now. Why are you attacking me? Hmm? Come here. Come here. I know. She's got grievances, guys, and I don't know why. Like, what are you grievancing for? Hmm? There's a go. She doesn't know. Look at her. Look at her. She doesn't know why she wants to have grievances. She's just in here yelling at me. Anyways, let's get into the book haul before my cat gets cat hair everywhere. And yes. Okay, so the first book I have is Star Daughter. This is by Shavita um, Thakar. Thakar. Um, this book is on my 23 for 23 list. Um, and essentially, we are following this girl named Shito. 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 We're following this girl who basically lives in this world where um, there is magic, but it's basically kind of like star magic. Um, and on her 17th birthday, she ends up listening to the call. She basically keep, keeps getting called to the sky. And the draw and draw the is stronger and stronger. And on her 17th birthday, she ends up uncontrollably releasing her magic and ends up injuring her father. And the only person that can save her father or heal her father is a full star. A full per a person that has full star magic and not like half star magic. So yes, she ends up ascending into the sky to her celestial family and the only reason that they have pulled her there is because they want her to compete in a competition of champions to see who is going to be the ruling house of the heavens um so she's obviously desperate to fall to save her father so she agrees and from there is why things are going to be happening all right the next book i have is woman of light this is by kali fajardo anstein this book is following a young girl or a woman who is left to fend for herself and her older brother. I'm not too sure. I'm just going to read like the little blurb. And it says, A dazzling ep epic of betrayal, love, and faith that spans five generations of indigenous uh, Chicano, ch 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 Chicano, excuse me, family in the American West. Um... I don't need to explain why I'm reading this. You guys know generations, past, history, connecting. Love it. I'm here for it. Um, and this is also an indigenous author, I believe, and that is why I own it. So yes. Next, I have the book, The Boyfriend Project. This is by Fyra Rockon. Uh, why play by love's rules when you can make your own? Mm. I've had this book on my shelf for quite some time. As you guys know, I'm not really into romance. Well, okay, let me rephrase that. I have a I don't pick up a lot of romance. But any time I do pick up romance, I'm in love with it. So maybe I need to be picking up more romance. But yes, this has been on my shelf for quite some time. And I was just like, let's just throw some romance in there. And I believe this book is on my... This one's on my 23 for 23 list. I'm not too sure if this one is. I can't remember. And I should know because I just literally talked about them. But I think I just picked this up because I wanted to put some romance in. The next book I have is All of Our Demise by uh, Amanda Foody and Christine Lynn Harmon. This is the second book in the All of Our All of Us Villains series. And I don't know. There's a number of families that all hold um, high magic. And they are the ones that control high magic. And they live in this world where basically pretty much everyone can do magic. But they can't do again high magic and these five families are meant to contain and be the holders of high magic because it is so dangerous so in order to do that they all compete every couple of years 
there is going to be this celestial, not celestial moon, but essentially there is like a dark moon and they all have to compete. And whoever wins is going to be the next family for however long to control the high magic. But I really enjoyed the first one. It's not political intrigue, but it's more intrigue of competition. And they're all basically fighting to the death. And um, you have those main characters that, or you have the characters that obviously going into it, you know they're the strongest, but sometimes being the strongest is not enough. And you have the underdogs, you have it all. You have the likable, the unlikable, and I really, okay, if you know anything about me, you know the first book was one of my faves and I just recently re read it because it was on my reread. So now I have A Psalm of Storm and Silence by Roseanne A. Brown. This is the last installment in the A Song of Race and Rune duology and I'm here for it. I'm ready to go ahead and pick this one up. I recently again I just reread re this <laughs> which is so funny because this is I read I read all of our all of us villains and then literally the next book was A Song of Race and Ruin so it's funny that I just did it in that order that was not planned. But anyways yes this is following a girl it's following two char two main characters. You have Katrina, who is the, Karina, excuse me, she is the crown princess of this kingdom, and her mother is basically the queen. She is the all-powerful. Now, there was some tragedy that went on in this family, and so that her mom and her are the, the only surviving of the family. And every year, they, I don't, well, I don't think it's every year, but every so often, they do a, what's it called? Oh festival essentially they have this festival going on where each affinity competes into this festival not to kill each other but they just compete in this one to see who the next ruling ruling house of blessing is going to be and not necessarily the ruling house but their house affinity is what's going to bless them for the next however many years we'll say 10 years and then you will follow in this other per point of view of i think his name is malachi I, malachi yeah you're following malachi who is a boy from a war stricken poverty stricken um country and he and his sisters are traveling into the this city and they are looked down on less than of and so they're not really wanted so they're trying to sneak into this world so something happens and it's not a spoiler because basically this is not this so basically um something happens to the queen and now karina has to run this festival while also trying to bring her mother back and then malachi gets thrown into a situation where his sister gets taken and now he has to kill the prince or kill the princess but also spoiler alert it's not really a spoil but the princess in order to bring her mom back has to have the king of a heart that's all I'm going to give you. I, it was one of my favorite reads. All right, the next two books are in the same exact series. And these are also on my, uh, I believe, the series that I'm trying to finish for 2023. Uh, is Winter and Stars Above by Marissa Meyer. This is the Lunar Chronicle series. This is the last two installments. And I'm so excited to be finished with them. I just finished uh, Ferris, which is Lavina's story. And I really enjoyed it. And you get to know why the bitch is crazy. Like, let's just be honest, she's crazy as hell. So this is Winter and kind of what I've seen from Winter and Ferris because that's the most that I've gotten of Winter and I'm excited to go ahead and pick this up. I heard that this is the best one in the series and then to finish it off with Stars Above. Um, yeah, I'm just ready to finish this. If you don't know what the Lunar Chronicles is about, um, this series has been out for quite some time. I think it came out back when I was in high school, which was a while ago, but it's basically following, it's a retelling, it's a fairy tale retellings of mainly, it starts off with Cinder, who is basically Cinderella. She's a cyborg and it follows the timeline or timeline, but storyline-ish of Cinderella. Um, the prince doesn't know that she's a cyborg. Um, she doesn't know who she really is because she's an orphan and all this other mumble jumble crazy stuff. So then you're following this adventure of her figuring out who she is and the relationship with the prince and other fairy tale characters. So then you also have Scarlet, who is supposed to be Snow White, and then Cress, who is supposed to be Rapunzel, Winter, or no, this is Snow White. Uh, Scarlet is Red Riding Hood. Um, and then you're kind of binding these stories together. The next book I have is Their Eyes Are Watching God by Zora Neale Hurston. This is on my classics um, list for 2023. This is following a young girl in the 1930 or 1933. Um, it's basically told, told in the captivating voice of a woman who refused to live in sorrow, bitterness, fear, or foolish, foolish romantic dreams. It is the story of a fair-skinned, fiercely independent Janie Crawford and her evolving selfhood through three marriages and a life marked by poverty, child, and support. This is obviously the staple of black classic. Um, Zora Neale Hurston was one of the first female authors, African-American authors, 
Um, and she definitely paved the way for a lot of other authors, obviously, especially female authors, uh, female black authors. And I read Hitting a Straight Lick with a Crooked Stick, which was a com uh, bind up of her short stories and collections and essays. And I loved it. I love her writing. I love how unforgiving Thornella Hurston is. She purposely writes the way she was. And she was criticized for it in her time. And she didn't care. And she kept going on. And I'm here for it. You hear me? I'm here for it. Okay. The next book that I have is Winter Countess by David Hashka Wom Wombly Wyden. This story is following a man named Virgil who basically is sought after to he he's basically the police like the local enforcer for this reservation in south in south dakota and so when the the justice system basically fails this reservation um the he is enacted to seek out their his own justice and so he goes back onto the reservation and finds his nephew being a vigilante and he enlists his his nephew and his ex-girlfriend to go ahead and dish out punishment that was due. Okay, the next book I have is The Storm Crow. This is by Kaylin jo Josephson. Josephson? Excuse me. This book is following a, a tropical kingdom where they are crow riders. Um, and so they end up getting invaded and all the crows end up being killed and slaughtered. And so you're following these two sisters. One of the sisters, which is the older sister, is having to run the kingdom after her mother, her parents' death. And the other sister, who is the main character, well, there's two main characters. You're following both sister, sisters. Um, Athena, um, or Thea, which is a nickname, she basically falls into this depression. All she ever wanted to do was be a crow writer. And obviously with this invasion, she has that opportunity taken away. Well, when she gets put in... She ends up getting told that she is going to be forced her her she's going to be forced into a marriage with obviously the invaders. Um, her older sister ends up getting sprung into action to try to stop this. Well, during the chaos, they actually end up finding a crow egg, and they're going to do the most dangerous thing and hatch this crow while also trying to start a rebellion. But yes, I'm so excited to get to this. It's been on my shelf for so so long, and this book is also on my twenty three for twenty three. The next book I have is *Music Nightmares* by Lanny Taylor again. This is to finish off my duology. Um, I believe this is the last book that I have for the duologies. Okay, so this book is obviously the second book in the Strange to Dreamer. Um, if you don't know, I recently just finished Strange to Dreamer last year. And it took me like three years to finish it. Um, the beginning half was very, very, very slow for me. And when I tell you like literally the second half of the book is where all the action is. Um... Yeah, it was slow sailing, but I'm just going, I'm ready to finish off the series. Um, it's only a duology, so I'm ready to finish this, especially where it was left off at. I need to know the rest. But if you don't know what the Stranger Dreamer is about, it's following this character named, named Leslo Strange. And for whatever reason, he is the only one that can remember the name of this world. And I'm blanking on the name of it myself. So, clear leap. So if there's a world named the Weep, but Leslie Strange is the only one that actually remembers the world of Weep. Nobody else does. So it, en end up, it ends up where the people from Weep end up coming and they are seeking help from all around the world to go ahead and help them with this problem in Weep. And so Leslie Strange, although he has no talents, he gets chosen to be the storyteller on this trip. And so when he gets there, they are trying to remove this large citadel thing in the sky. That's the first perspective. And now you're following... But yeah, you're following one of the characters for who is actually living in the tower and you're following... Her perspective of what's happening on the ground and to as well um again i'm just ready to go ahead and finish this series this is the sequel to uh re not redemptor but ray bearer and that is redemptor by jordan e Fuego. uh i loved ray bearer so much it was, i gave it five stars again it was also in the uh shaded choice awards loved it so much i it this book could do no wrong um, and so I am just so excited to go ahead and pick up the second book. If you don't know what Ray Bearer is about, Ray Bearer is following this girl who essentially, her mother has raised her to, her mother has secluded her from the outside world and has just raised her to do one thing and that is to fulfill her wish. She wants her daughter to fulfill 
a wish for her. I'm not going to tell you what it is because it was spoiled. So then she essentially has to go in this kingdom where there is one king, but in the kingdom, you have a king. And then he, he has advisors. But outside of them just being normal advisors, they're all connected. And they all went through this. I'm not going to say challenge. It's not a challenge. But they, as, as a child, they will go through this where they choose these people to be connected to them. So that is basically what she gets thrown to do. She ends up getting thrown into this so that she can compete to get close to the prince. And in order to get close to the prince, she will be able to lay out her mother's wishes. That is kind of the gist. This story is so beautiful because you see the relationships and not just the relationships that are connected to the prince, but are also connected between the council members or the group members that are, I can't remember the, the specific name of what they're called, but they all have a certain connection. And it is so beautiful to just see these connections and friendships, um, intimate and non-intimate. And it's just overall beautiful story. The world building, the magic system, the mythology, all of it, I'm here for it. And you guys should pick up Ray Bearer. And I am so excited to go ahead and finish out. Okay, so if you're going to tell there's a pattern because I am trying to finish out these these mangas or at least catch up in them so I can pick up other mangas. And the first one I have is Assassin Class assassination classroom by uc matsu this is volume number six um again i can't this is the broken record but if you're new here i'm gonna say it. anyways this is following a alien who has invaded earth and he says that he is going to destroy the earth um but he's going to give them a year time to assassinate him but the only people that can assassinate him are these specific children in this classroom and i believe it's classroom e i always forget e three e so three e are basically i'm not gonna call them delinquents because they're not all delinquents but basically they're the non-well off or can't really make it with the best grades or just really, really just the low ends of the classes. Like they're doing their best, but they're not the best, you know? And it's not just society, it's not just a school, it's all society. They everyone looks down on class three E. Um, and so he says he wants to be the teacher of this classroom and he's going to give this classroom a year to assassinate him. But he's also gonna be their teacher. So he's teaching them basic like subjects, math, English, science, the whole nine. But he's also teaching them how to assassinate him. And it is so wholesome. Um, the lessons that he's teaching them is just so beautiful, and you're seeing them grow, and I'm just loving it so much. And I kind of have a gist of why he chose this classroom. I'm not going to spoil it. All right, next I have The Spy Family by Ta, um, Tatsuya, excuse me, Endo. This is volume number four. Again, I really, the first one was slow, but they have been kicking off for me, and I'm just enjoying the ride of seeing these things unfold. Um, again, if you don't know what Spy Family is about, it is following this family. It's not really a family. It's following this man who's a spy, and he has to infiltrate this school and kill one of the parents of that yeah, he has to kill one of the parents who sends their child to this school. But it's this elite, this extreme elite school. But so in order to get into it, he has to create a family. So he ends up adopting this, adopting an orphan. But little does he know that this orphan is a telepath. She can read minds. So she knows 100% that this man is a spy. And then he obviously has to find a wife. Well, the wife that he finds, little does he know, is also an assassin. But the daughter knows because she's a telepath. So these two people are agreed to be in a fake marriage to for their own agenda. Neither one of them know why. They just know that, oh, they told them this fake story and they agreed to a fake marriage. The only person that knows is this little girl who is a telepath. But she's also like five or six. So she doesn't really understand a lot of the things that she's hearing in people's brains. And it is quite literally so funny. Um, it's very enjoyable. The first one was a little bit slow because it kind of just kept repeating the premise of the story. So it kind of dragged. But now, once you get past the first one, everyone else is just so enjoyable. All right, the next book I have is from Under the Mountains. And this is by a handful of people, Gibson, Leong, and Churchland. Um, I picked this one up because of the native vibes it was giving me, um, indigenous vibes. All right, and last but not least, I have something is killing the children. This is volume number three. This is by James Tyon the fifth, or excuse me, the yeah the fourth. Um, Weather Del Adra and Miguel Moretto. Uh, this is the third volume. The title is very self-explanatory. Something is killing the children. Um. You're following this world. It's basically a modern world. And there is something in the woods that is killing the children. And so Erica Slasher ends up, not Slasher, Slaughter. Erica Slaughter gets sent to this world or to this town to figure out and kill whatever is killing these children. That is like so self-explanatory. There's nothing else to explain about that. But yes, these are all the books. You probably can't see them, but I have a good number of them. And I'll hold up a few. You know, I'll hold up a few for a thumbnail. But yeah, um, these are all the books that I'm going to be reading for September. So if there are any in this pile that you are interested in reading or you think that I should get to first, 
let me know down in the comments. If you want a buddy read, let me know as well. I'm trying to get better at buddy reading. So if you do want a buddy read, hit me up. Okay. All right. That is all that I have for you guys today. Be sure to check out my description where you can find easy ways to contact me as well as all the books and videos that I talked about. If you liked this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if not, just imagine I did and come back again. Until next time, keep imagining.